first layer so these are the different layers of the epidermis the first important layer is the stratum corneum followed by the stratum lucidum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum and lastly we are having the stratum basal so these are the five important layers of the epidermis as we can appreciate over here now what is the macule and what is the patch so any circumscribed flat flat means it is not raised above the skin surface any circumscribed flat lesion okay which can be distinguishable from the surrounding skin color so as you can appreciate these very small small flat areas okay and they have a different color than the surrounding skin color okay now if the size of this is 5 mm or less so less than equal to 5 mm we are using the term macule and if the same if it is more than 5 mm in size then we are using the term patch then we are using the term patch okay so you should understand what is a macule what is a patch now what is the meaning of hyperkeratosis thickening of the stratum corneum often associated with a qualitative abnormality of the keratin so if you can appreciate over here there is a normal layer of the skin you can appreciate there is a normal keratin and there is an epidermis layer as we can appreciate but as we can see as it is approaching over here there is an increase in the epidermal thickness so what is the condition called as acanthosis and not only that the amount of keratin is also increasing so just see how much is the amount of keratin that has increased over here so this is called as hyperkeratosis and you can also see associated acanthosis also in the same diagram over here hello students welcome back today we are going to start with the next topic today we are going to understand the skin inside the skin we are going to read about the relevant skin anatomy whatever relevant anatomy is there we are going to understand we are going to understand the relevant gross and microscopic lesions of the skin then we are going to go into the details of actinic keratosis which is the precursor lesion for squamous cell carcinoma so let us begin today's topic of discussion as you can appreciate over here basically the skin is composed of the three main parts one is the epidermis uh, below the epidermis we have the dermis and lastly we are having the hypodermis or the subcutaneous tissue which is composed of fat so the epidermis if you can see they are having different layers like the stratum corneum granulosum spinosum stratum basal okay uh, in the dermis in the dermis what you can see you can see the adnexal structures like the sweat glands over here okay you can see the sebaceous glands the sweat glands you can see the hair follicles along with the hair bulb okay now very important thing whatever lining of skin that we can appreciate over here that is also continuing into the adnexal structures so whatever tumors are arising from this epidermis can also arise from the epidermal lining of the adnexal structures as well along with that we can see that there are lots of motor and sensory nerves along with the blood vessels also inside the dermis now the hypodermis basically contains the subcutaneous fat as we can appreciate in this diagram now this is these are the different layers of the skin as you can appreciate the first layer so these are the different layers of the epidermis the first important layer is the stratum corneum followed by the stratum lucidum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum and lastly we are having the stratum basal so these are the five important layers of the epidermis as we can appreciate over here now very important is to appreciate this granule cell layer so this layer of the skin uh, this layer of the epidermis which is contain granules is called as stratum granulosum i will show you more clearly with the help of one more diagram so as you can appreciate there are different types of layers so very important is this granular layer as we can appreciate which is containing multiple granules now this particular diagram i am showing you uh, so just to make sure that you understand the different kinds of cells which are present in the epidermis they are containing certain specialized dendritic cells which is the antigen presenting cells present in the skin this is called as langerhans cells as we can appreciate over here now in the basal cell layer you can very much appreciate what is the melanocyte you can see the melanocyte the melanocytes are basically the cells present in the basal layer of the epidermis which has a role of synthesis of melanin which is protecting us from the uv rays also in the basal cell layer there are certain merkel cells which are uh, you know believed to have some neuroendocrine function okay okay 
Now, looking at this diagram, I just wanted to enumerate the different kinds of cells which are present in each layer. So, if you see, basically, in the epidermis, okay, we are having the antigen-presenting cell, that is the Langerhans cells. Uh, then we are having the keratinocytes, as we can appreciate. So, these are all the different types and uh, of keratinocytes, okay. Then we have the melanocytes. As you can appreciate, the melanocytes are giving out certain projections which is basically uh, sending the melanin to different kinds of keratinocytes okay then we have certain cd8 plus t cells also now within the dermis you contain uh, you see the lymphatics blood vessels okay you also see the dermal dendritic cells okay you see the mast cells you see the cd4 plus t cells you also see the gamma delta t cells over here the fibroblast which is laying down the collagen and certain inflammatory cells might be present like the neutrophils and the macrophages as well so, so starting with the introduction of the skin, if you see, the skin has been appreciated as the largest organ in our body and it is a very complicated organ. In fact, it is the first line of defense against potentially harmful infectious and physical agents. The skin is also a highly sophisticated sensory organ and it even has a very important endocrine role, particularly they play an important role in the synthesis of vitamin D, which it is synthesizing from cholesterol along with the help of sunlight. Now there are different cell types which are present in the kidney, uh, sorry, in the skin uh, that we have already seen and we are just going to understand their important function. So the first important component of our skin is the presence of the keratinocytes also called as the squamous epithelial cells. Now normally if you see these are the keratinocytes as we can appreciate okay these are the keratinocytes that we can appreciate. Now if you see two keratinocytes if you see they are basically tightly adhered to each other by certain means. So what are those let us see. So the squamous epithelial cells or the keratinocytes they are normally glued to each other okay by means of certain cell junctions that is called as desmosomes important mcq and remember the keratinocytes they produce abundant amount of a keratin protein okay so this keratin protein if you see on top of uh, any layer of a skin even if a normal layer of skin let me just enumerate this with the help of diagram you can appreciate that uh, over here we have the different kinds of keratinocytes so these are all the keratinocytes okay this is one keratinocyte another keratinocyte so they are glued to each other by means of tight junctions called as the desmosomes and these keratinocytes they have an important function of producing keratin okay so this very tight layer of uh, your keratinocytes okay they are also producing what is called as keratin so this is the keratin as you can appreciate over here so this is called as the keratin so both the keratin this keratin layer plus this layer of the skin that we can appreciate over here they are forming a very important mechanical or physical barrier so very important thing is that uh, the keratinocytes they are normally attached to each other by means of cell uh, junctions called as desmosomes and they are producing a lot of uh, 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 keratin protein both of which are serving to create a very tough durable physical barrier as we had seen now very important not only this the keratinocytes they also secrete certain soluble substances like the cytokines and the defensins that is going to augment and regulate the cutaneous immune response okay now second importantly the second important cells as i showed you that in the basal layer of the epidermis we are having what is called as the melanocytes they are present within the epidermis and they are responsible for production of a pigment called as melanin which is a brown colored pigment that is going to absorb and protect against potentially injurious uv radiation in the sunlight so let me just tell you once again so these cells as we can appreciate this is in the basal layer in the stratum basal so in the basal layer of the epidermis you can see certain melanocytes and they are giving certain projections okay so these projections are reaching towards the different different kinds of keratinocytes and they are providing melanin pigment to these keratinocytes okay so that they can protect our skin from the uv rays so melanocytes producing melanin okay and these are being given to or shared with the other keratinocytes so that they can protect us from the uv light and the melanocyte they are present in the basal layer of the skin it is present in the basal layer of the skin and what is the function of this melanin pigment which is a brown colored pigment it is an endogenous pigment in our body which is providing protection against potentially injurious uv radiation in sunlight then the third kind of cells that is the antigen presenting cells that i have already shown you the skin is serving as the first line of defense against microorganisms 
and it is constantly exposed to microbial and non-microbial antigens which are processed by intraepidermal dendritic cells that is called as Langerhans cell. So whatever uh, microbial and non-microbial substances are entering the skin, so they are first caught by a specialized dendritic cell or a specialized antigen presenting cell present in the skin and this specialized antigen presenting cell present in the skin is called as Langerhans cell. So I have already shown you with the help of diagram I will show you once again. So in this diagram as you can appreciate we can see that there is a presence of a very important antigen presenting cell that is called as the Langerhans cell which is the specialized antigen presenting cell or specialized dendritic cell which is present in the skin whose function is to present antigens okay now, ve now very very importantly the Langerhans cell they're secreting certain factors that is going to augment the innate immune response and migrate from the skin to the regional lymph nodes okay where they are going to present the antigen to the T lymphocytes present in the lymph node thus they are going to stimulate the adaptive immune system in our body now uh, also in uh, addition to the Langerhans cells we also have special dendrocyte which are another type of dendritic cells which will perform the same function that is performed by the Langerhans cells but these specialized dendrocytes they are present within the dermis so just like Langerhans cells are present in the epidermis in the dermis we are having specialized dendrocytes which perform similar function so the dendrocytes or these antigen presenting cells they will recognize the antigens present in the skin and they are going to carry them to the lymph node and they are going to present these antigens to the T cells in the lymph node thus they are going to stimulate the adaptive immune system now lymphocytes are also present now one very important feature is that that following the stimulation by the dendritic cells in the lymph nodes the T cells okay they express certain addition molecules sort called as CLA standing for cutaneous lymphocyte associated antigen and other kinds of chemokine receptors like the CCR4 and CCR10 and these specialized T cells which are containing these particular addition molecules and chemokine receptors they are going to lymph node and they are going to go back into the dermis or in the skin only and this is a process which is directed in part by the chemokines which are secreted by the activated keratinocytes so if any kind of pathogen if any kind of pathogen is entering the skin okay so they are going to stimulate a special kind of T lymphocytes which is having receptors and addition molecules that is going to respond to the signals by the activated keratinocytes and they are going to home back to the dermis so as uh, so we can say that these are the T cells which are specialized okay to function within the skin okay very very important now in addition to the T cells small amount of B cells are also found in the dermis that can participate in the humoral response to the antigens encountered in the skin now along with the lymphocytes our skin is a large and complex ecosystem uh, just like our intestine okay so they are providing a niche or they provide an, a micro environment for the growth of multiple kinds of bacteria fungus viruses and the mites so these organisms they have developed a symbiotic relationship with the human host and they appear to contribute to health in a number of ways so very important thing is that uh, just like our uh, you know gut microbiome the skin micro biome is very very important uh, for our body so it prevents colonization by any potentially harmful organism it will not allow any harmful organism to reside in our skin now along with this as I already mentioned there are a number of afferent nerve fibers and a set of specialized adnexal structures also so very important uh, thing is that we have a lot of blood vessels uh, so skin is highly sensitive uh, uh, sorry the, we have a lot of uh, nerve endings in the skin so the skin is highly sensitive it is responsive to fine touch it is responsive to uh, vibration sensation cold heat itchiness okay uh, of course sensations as well in addition they also have autonomic efferent nerve fibers or autonomic innervation also okay which is going to regulate uh, the components of the sweat glands as well as the effector pili muscles okay and they can influence the function of the innate and adaptive immune cells in the dermis as well now not only this another type of uh, cell is present in the basal layer that is called as the Merkel cell so these are present in the epithelial basal cell layer that I have already shown you and they may have certain neuroendocrine or mechanoreceptor functions as well. Okay. Now we have certain adnexal components in the skin. Adnexal components are the sweat gland, sebaceous gland that is there. So for example, whenever the, the temperature is rising, we, our body needs to lose heat. So the body will start to sweat. So it is with the help of sweat glands that uh, 
our body is basically guarding against any variations in the body temperature okay and we are also having the hair follicles okay uh, which uh, you know um, uh, the hair follicles which are not only giving rise to the hair but they are also providing a particular niche for harboring epithelial stem cells which is capable of regenerating the superficial epithelial skin structure so for example if there is any kind of injury to the skin there is cut injury trauma burn any kind of injury so how are these uh, injuries you know how are these uh, cells replaced so there are certain stem cells which are present along this hair bulb or along the hair follicles okay so they are having certain stem cells which are helping in regenerating the superficial epithelial skin after any kind of injury so very important thing is that any disturbance or in this homeostasis in the skin okay that um, that is existing between the skin cells it may produce conditions as varied as wrinkles and hair loss blisters rashes cancers and disorders of immune regulation so the skin is performing a very very important function in our body so i hope it is very very crystal clear about the normal anatomy of the skin wherein we have discussed in details about the parts of the skin including the epidermis dermis and hypodermis the epidermis comprising of five main layers the stratum corneum lucidum stratum granulosum spinosum and stratum basal then we have already seen the stratum granulosum is containing some granules within then what are the cells in each part so as we have seen the, the uh, antigen presenting cell in the epidermis is called as langerhans cell and those in the dermis they are called specialized dendritic cells we have also seen other cells in the basal layer of the epidermis that is the melanocyte which is producing melanin and the merkel cell which whose function is not known but it is believed to be neuro uh, regulatory in nature then we have also seen the different kinds of cells in our skin and the components and we have read in basic about the skin so now after having read about the relevant important anatomy of the skin we are now going to understand certain basic nomenclature of skin lesions now there are list of these lesions which are given in robins some of these lesions they are grossly visible they are macroscopic lesion that you can see with the naked eye and some of these lesions are microscopic in nature okay so you can only see them under you can appreciate them under the microscope so whatever be these terms i will show you you know most of these things i am going to show you for example what is excoriation lichenification what is a macule patch what is a difference what is onycholysis what is a papule nodule what is a plaque what is a pustule what is a scale what is a bulla blister what is a wheel or all these things i will show you then under the microscopic lesions what is the meaning of acanthosis what is dyskeratosis what is hypergranulosis what is hyperkeratosis what is parakeratosis what is ulceration so under the microscopic lesions i am going to show you some important ones only so let us discuss these importantly so what are the common macroscopic skin lesions if you can see over here there is what is called as excoriation so what is excoriation traumatic lesion which is breaking the epidermis if you can appreciate this is an epidermis that has been broken and it is basically a causing a linear defect a straight raw linear defect deep scratch can induce the same and this is often self induced so this is what is called as excoriation what is lichenification wherein the skin becomes very rough thickened rough skin okay usually the result of repeated rubbing or scratching or repeated friction so you must have seen such areas in older individuals somewhere you can see this this is called as lichenification it is a thickening of a skin or a rough skin okay lichen why the term lichen because lichen is similar similar to lichen on a rock so we use the term lichen lichenification okay it occurs because of repeated rubbing of friction now so these are the different layers of the epidermis the first important layer is the stratum corneum followed by the stratum lucidum stratum granulosum stratum spinosum and lastly we are having the stratum basal so these are the five important layers of the epidermis as we can appreciate over here what is a macule and what is a patch so any circumscribed flat flat means it is not raised above the skin surface any circumscribed flat lesion okay which can be distinguishable from the surrounding skin color so as you can appreciate these very small small flat areas okay and they have a different color than the surrounding skin color okay now if the size of this is 5 mm or less so less than equal to 5 mm we are using the term macule and if the same if it is more than 5 mm in size then we are using the term patch then we are using the term patch okay so you should understand what is a macule what is a patch circumscribed flat lesion distinguished from the surrounding skin by the color 
macules are 5 mm in diameter or less whereas patches are greater than 5 mm in diameter now what is onycholysis onycholysis is nothing but it is the separation of the nail plate from the nail bed usually you can see somewhat like this this is what is called as onycholysis usually how and where you will come across these these things for example whenever a, a woman or a man is buying a new shoe which is not fitting very well and he is wearing or he or she is wearing it for a long period of time sometimes it might lead to separation of the nail plate from the nail bed so clinically when the patient comes to you you should be able to understand what is the condition so what is the treatment for the same onycholysis don't have to do anything just you stop wearing that shoes and automatically as the nail is going to uh, you know reju as the nail is going to you know grow this part is going to come out okay and it will be healed then we have something called as a papule or a nodule so this is nothing but uh, elevated any thing which is showing an elevation on the skin so elevated dome shaped means elevated dome shaped or flat top lesion papules are the term when such nodular lesion or when such elevated lesions are 5 mm or less across and nodules are the term when they are greater than 5 mm in size so you now know what is the difference between a papule and a nodule both of them are same just the difference is in the size of them now what is plaque these are also elevated lesion but they are not dome shaped they are flat top lesion as we can appreciate so they are going to rise abruptly but they will be flat topped they are usually greater than 5 mm across in size and they may be caused by coalescent papules so for example one papule is here one papule is here one papule is there so they might you know fuse with each other to form a very wide elevated lesion okay now what is a pustule now any raised lesion which is filled with pus we call it as a pustule so discrete pus filled raised lesion is called as a pustule now as you can appreciate this is a scaly you know usually old people if you see sometimes they develop fish like scales okay so dry horny plate like excrescences usually the result of imperfect cornification okay this leads to what is called as a scale now what is a vesicle bulla or a blister so sometimes you see certain fluid filled lesion so these are certain small fluid filled lesions over here on the skin especially in case of chicken pox if you see you can see such lesions so vesicle bulla blister these are fluid filled raised lesions which are 5 mm or less across or greater than 5 mm so if they are less than 5 mm it is called as a vesicle if it is greater than 5 mm across it is called as a bulla okay blister is a common term for either lesion you can use the term blister okay so i hope you understood any fluid filled lesion okay is called as a vesicular vesicle or a bulla if it is a 5 mm or less we call it as vesicle more than 5 mm it is called as bulla either of them you can call it as a blister as well now what is a veil okay it is basically an itchy transient elevation of the skin with variable blanching and erythema so certain areas are whitish they are blanched certain areas they are red this is called as a veil okay it is actually formed as a result of dermal edema it is formed because of dermal edema i hope this term is very clear to you all these are all the grossly apparent lesions and in your exam you might be given such a picture and you might be asked to choose what are these lesions so i've already explained you with the help of diagram so now you understand the common uh, skin lesions as we can appreciate over here so common grossly or macroscopic lesions now having understood this common macroscopic lesions we are now going to understand about the common microscopic skin lesions so what are the microscopic skin lesions let us try and understand about the microscopic skin lesion so as you can appreciate the first important microscopic skin lesion is called as acanthosis that means diffuse thickening of the epidermis that is called as uh, acanthosis so for example you can see normally this is the epidermis layer as we can appreciate this is this much now sometimes okay there can be thickening sometimes the layer can become very thick as we can see this is called as acanthosis when there is a diffuse increase in the number of keratinocytes so as you can appreciate over here also there is an increased number of squamous cells as we can appreciate over here in this diagram this is called as diffuse epidermal hyperplasia so when i will be teaching you uh, different kinds of disorders in the skin then you have to understand these are certain basic concepts that you should have to understand what is acanthosis okay so that is why you have to understand acanthosis basically means a diffuse increase in the epidermal thickness 
The second important term over here is dyskeratosis, that is abnormal keratinization. So usually remember one important point that keratinization is taking place above the stratum granulosa layer. So if there is uh, keratinization occurring in the cells below the stratum granulosum, that is called as abnormal uh, keratinization. So for example, as we can appreciate, this is the stratum granulosum area, which is containing deep amount of pigments. Now over here, below the stratum granulosum, you are having certain cells which is showing keratinization. Okay, that is the presence of keratin. Okay, over here we can appreciate. So this presence of keratin in the cells below the stratum granulosum is called as premature keratinization. And there is certain pathological significance for the same. It might indicate underlying malignancy. Okay, so that is why it is very important to understand what is a dyskeratosis. It is an abnormal premature keratinization in the cells below the stratum granulosum. Now, what is the meaning of hyperkeratosis? Thickening of the stratum corneum, often associated with a qualitative abnormality of the keratin. So, if you can appreciate over here, there is a normal layer of the skin. You can appreciate there is a normal keratin and there is an epidermis layer as we can appreciate. But as we can see, as it is approaching over here, there is an increase in the epidermal thickness. So, what is the condition called as acanthosis? And not only that, the amount of keratin is also increasing. So just see how much is the amount of keratin that has increased over here. So this is called as hyperkeratosis and you can also see associated acanthosis also in the same diagram over here. Now parakeratosis, what is parakeratosis? Let me just tell you. Now remember in the superficial layers of the normal epidermis as you can appreciate over here. Okay, just let me show you in the superficial layer of the epidermis. So over here in the keratin layer usually the nucleus is absent. It is not present in the superficial layers of the epidermis. It is usually absent. If the nucleus remains in the superficial layers over here, as you can appreciate, the nucleus has remained in these uh, in the superficial stratum corneum. This condition is called as parakeratosis. Now remember, parakeratosis, when present on the mucous membrane, is considered as a normal entity. Now ulceration. Ulceration in the skin is whenever there is a discontinuity of the epithelium. So a discontinuity of the skin marked by complete loss of the epidermis, okay, revealing the dermis or the subcutis is called as ulceration. So for example, over here you can see that there is a particular epidermis is present over here. But as you go ahead over here, look at this area. There is no epidermis present, no epidermal lining is present in this area. Okay, so this area is said to be ulcerated. So any area where there is a discontinuous of the surface epithelium or the epidermis okay, is said to be ulcerated as we can appreciate in this particular diagram. With this we have completed in details about the relevant anatomy of the skin. Hope you have enjoyed this particular lecture.